Greetings, mortals. I am the Fallen Shogun, and welcome to another Who's That Indie? Being a strategic, tactical, and survival game straight to your face holes. Today's indie game is Flotsam, a strategic, real time strategy colony builder on the water. Now, we've had a, a water colony builder before, but it was more city builder than colony, and that was buoyancy. This is completely different, even though it has a similar kind of setting. Also, I'm paused right now because this early access alpha version, which came out a couple of days ago, needs a lot of optimization unless they've changed it in the last few minutes because there was an update. So it means the game will freeze and lag here and there, fair, because obviously it's very early. Now, the difference between this game and Buoyancy is this is a colony and the other one was a city. That means in the other one, no one gave a damn about your people. In this one, each and every colonist matters. So you can see a bit of lag here and there. So yeah, I have three colonists to start off with. You can get more time progresses throughout the area. You don't expect to get too many. You're looking at oxygen not included levels of people. So like maybe 10 at best, give or take. I played the game during the alpha closed phase. I'm not going to talk at all about the alpha close phase because I want to point out what the game looks like currently right now. So, each and every colonist matters. You need resources. There are four starting resources you can get, but all resources come from the ocean. And what you need for your people is plastic, which builds nearly everything, and wet wood. Now, you can't use wet wood for anything because it's wet. You need to build dryers and things like that, so we're going to have to get some plastic and some wet wood to start off with. You also need fish. To find fish, fish is your food. There's some fish. Now one thing I'm going to talk about while we're just letting this go on. The building system is quite quite useful. Let's just do this. So I'm going to build up to here. You can see. 24 plastic. We now have a set of three floating platforms for us to actually build some walkways. Each and every thing. So there's not too many things. Each and everything we show you what it needs is like the houses require dry wood. But well, we can obviously get a dryer to dry things. They need a working a woodworking shed requires dry wood. So dry wood is quite important. Which means there is a step, you know, you need to get the wet wood, they need to get dry wood. One of the things I'm going to talk about, it may not have changed, or it might have changed, is the randomization. Each and every time you join the world, start the world, it randomizes completely. And it can make the game either really hard or really easy. You know, you need to make sure there's plastic and there's wood nearby and fish. Now, I generated it 10 times yesterday, and three times I didn't get any more plastic outside of just the one immediately next to me, which of course caused massive issues, and two times I got no fish, which means obviously I had to then move on to the next world. There's a map. So yeah, there was no fish, so after I ran out of my 40 fish, I had to immediately move to the next zone. Now, zone is pretty major, as you can see. It shows me each one of these. I need fuel to get to these, but next area just requires me to get a sail. And the next area has villages and an abandoned town. As you can see, there's villages here too. This will get me fresh oil, water. Fresh water, oil, and abandoned town. This has villages. I guess be animals. And you can see, there's different ways you can go depending on what you need. Now, of course, I want to get more people as time goes by. But yeah, building up. So, you have a finite amount of resources, like there's an island over here where we get our sail, and that's all there is. Now the map for each zone is up to the fog. You can't grab anything out of the fog, so the one time I didn't have any fish, all the fish was just outside. Like just there, I couldn't grab it. As you can see, let's find some resources here. See, nothing highlights. So it says no. So yeah, it exists, but you can't do anything about it. Oh, as you can see, there is some major freezing still in this version. That's also there even when I'm not recording. So first, we're going to put down two drying racks. Actually, let's just do this. You don't have to. This just looks cool. There you go. So get some drying. Actually, that's storage. Get some drying racks down. Actually, start drying some stuff. Now, one of the big priorities you have at the very beginning is water. Your people need food, sleep, and water. You have like 40 food, and water is a problem. Now, 
I'm going to go through the water stages because there's another big bugbear in the game currently which needs to be sorted out because it may not be truly a major thing but it actively slows down the entire game to a crawl. So let's see how's doing it. It might have actually changed. We're gonna see what happens when you start um you know, like here. Oh, they have changed things. Oh it's lagged, I can't tell. But yeah, it already started to get quite nasty. You just teleported. Maybe that was a bit of an issue. Let's see if it actually has changed. So as you can see, they walk over the resources to go and build things. That was a weird lag thing just there, I guess. Each of your little guys can only hold five items. So each basket only holds five things. So obviously this requires... Ten. So that requires two trips. As you see, the building it does a nice little durability. And... Boing. So drying racks can do fish or wood. Obviously we have no fish right now, so wood's important. Now we're going to go into the water as soon as we get access to that, which will require dry wood. Now the big bugbear which you'll find at the very beginning is carried resources, resources in buildings and resources in ships, because you can build little ships to go and gather more resources, do not count. Like, says here we have five dry, let's see, oh. yeah, they do not count. So, what happens is the entire production chain takes forever for this situation, which I'll show when we get to it, but yes. So, if you pick up wet wood over here, it doesn't count as in your inventory. So, if you have no wet wood and you pick up three, your guy has to go back to the town hall and drop off the wet wood. Then he has to go to the drying rack, from the, from the town hall to the drying rack. And then if you say have another building which requires dry wood. He has to go take the drying rack to the town hall, town hall to the next building. It starts building up. I'll show that when we get the water set up. So we need to get this going on. We need some dry wood. Oh, that's not been set. So if people are going out grabbing this, I'm going to turn this up and down the amount of people. So you can actually choose how it goes. Your swimmers, until you get boats, can only go within, oh, whale, can only go within the circle. So to, you need to get boats to travel further on as you can see. Because I can't get this, I can't get the fish. Boats can hold 10 items. They're actually pretty awesome, pretty useful. You'll be needing them very much early on. But right now, of course, we need to get... Oh, it's going to sleep. Oh, come on, Shanks. Oh, you know, so he's trying to get tired fast. Of course he does. Useless. So each and every character has their own little traits, so little things are like... This guy moves faster in the water. Yo. This guy apparently needs less sleep. There we go. So as you can see, we have three dry wood, but it's not showing. There we go. See, that will become important when I show you how the water works. So, people are going round. We need to get some wood. Let's just speed things up. Let them grab stuff. Then we'll get a woodworking shed down here and carry on working. I do like how this works. You don't have to go in straight lines. As you can see, you can go in every direction. But the cardinal points, as you can see, are very much taken. Also, I want to go build straight on off the this edge. That's it, build. Now, just like oxygen not included, you can actually set priority for your people. As you can see, you can turn it off, turn it on, tell them not to swim, tell them to swim, stuff like that. So you tell them not to swim, of course, they won't go out and gather resources. Okay, now we've got that, let's go build ourselves a woodworking shed to have access to the next layer of resources. So to build boats, we need rope. To build rope, we need dry wood. There we go. So speeding things up, show how things are going. Farms, production. So there's two types of buildings. There's workshops where your people actively work, and there's farms, which are these. They put items on there, they don't need to look after them. Not an actual farm, but classified as a farm. Look at that whale in the distance. Whales, by the way, currently do nothing. They're just really awesome things to watch. Look at it. Look at that art style. I love the art style of this game. I absolutely love the art style. It's so unique. Weird little floppy in the air things. Absolutely unique. Like, the world is destroyed, so this is the current world. You find people on top of skyscrapers and things and flats. 
and you are what's left. So that's why there's like survivors all over the place. I can look on this says, some drifters have tried to make a town on that island. Bad idea. With all the garbage, floods, or sailboats has been wrecked on the cliffs though. Perhaps we could make use of its mast. Okay, we need to get some boats up. Okay, get me two rope. So, the woodworking shed can do two things currently. It's early alpha access, as you can see 0.15, so things may change. But you can only build two things in the woodworking shed. There is research. There is research. To get research, you need to investigate certain towns, which give you, like, research points. A uh, local town is just there to get you the sale. The next town will give us research points. I know that because obviously I've been testing. But I recommend if you ever get the point, get a solar still, because that gets you water without having to generate. Now, bearing in mind, everything I tell you may change in the future. This is what I'm getting from the current build. But yeah, things change a lot. So right now, as you can see, it takes about 14 seconds. We have one rope. Now, storage ha can have rope, because it now says so, but we have no rope in storage because of this. Which means I wanted to build anything like a boat, which we can. If you look over here, see, we don't have any rope. Let's just build you here for now. So how boats work, you have to build a parking spot, and then you have to pick a boat. So it's a salvage boat, which requires three wood, and a fishing boat, which requires six. Boats are very important because they can carry 10 resources and move faster than your people. So it is recommended to get a boat up as fast as possible. It's also highly recommended to get the water up as fast as possible. And also some storage, but we'll get that in a second. Let's speed things up. So the only way to get fish is a fishing boat. And obviously the only way to get outside past the circle is to get a salvage boat. It's actually also why I think get some uh, firewood up and running. And then also get a cup of storage. There we go. So as you can see, if you have to go grab resources. Okay. So I'm going to now put down a boat. This now grabs all that. So only boats can go there, obviously they can go further than that. But we need to go down out and grab some stuff. Yeah, we need to get some more wood, we need to get some more plastic waste, someone's going to get in the boat. Again, if we want to, we can prioritise someone to do that, but we don't have enough people to really make priorities, so that would be a bit of a moot point. Oh, I do like, I do love the style, absolutely love the style. There we go. Now to get that dry wood. Also, as soon as someone prioritises it for something, it gets immediately taken out of your inventory. So if this, if I put like four pieces of wood to be made here, we watch the top. See, now it instantly vanished. It's already been prioritised for that building and removed from the inventory space. Now, yeah, I'm going to be talking again because I told you before there's a one of the big bugbears which make things slow. And like I said, that's buildings and people not counting resources. Water is a major, majorly important thing in this game. Like, without water, your people die very quickly. But we need, obviously, eight water to make this. It's going to take a little bit of a while. I mean, eight, eight wood, not eight water. That's why, the, that's why the solar still is very important. The early game, you can live or die on the first area if you accidentally get it wrong. There is 20... Water automatically on the third island. If you want to just rush through, you know, grab the people on the second island, grab the resource and immediately move. You can just do that, although I'd recommend slowly building up, of course. Okay, how much, how much of this do I need? I need ten. That requires eight. It's called right. Okay, let's build you here for now then. Oh, I've got some more plastic. Okay, I can move this. So here's where the issue arises. Resources don't count until they're inside. Like you said, until they're inside the storage. Resources can't go from one building to another. So this is how water works. Water, to be refined, requires two firewood. 
to get two firewood, you need one dry wood. To get one dry wood, you need one wet wood. So, if you just got some wet wood in now, it goes from my salvage boat to my storage. From my storage to my drying rack. From my drying rack to my storage. From my storage to my woodworking shed. From my woodworking shed to my storage. From my storage to my distiller. From my distiller to my town hall. Do you see that? That's five. Let's see. One. Two. No. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. That's six. What's that? One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Yeah. That's six steps. That's three extra steps when it really does, in fact, need to be. Like, I'm to I like the game, but I'm going to talk about how the randomization at the beginning can destroy you and the fact that these extra steps mean that water does become a bit of an issue. You can sort it out by the solar collectors, which, I'll be honest, every picture I've seen of other people's alpha bases is just like 20 solar collectors. So they don't have to do this rigmarole of hopefully keeping the wood long enough to try and keep themselves alive with water. I hope they fix it, you know, quality of life, so that people can just go from here to where it's needed, instead of just in other places. But because stuff gets reserved instantly, like you saw here, just go here, like, just do that. It just... Oh, it just that. oh. So you saw you've got ten... Let's just do this. If I do this, and I can go there, you can see in the top up here, it just gets pulled, it's instantly reserved. Stuff gets instantly reserved from storage. It's just a minor, I say it gets it's a minor noise, it can become pretty major when you're desperate for water, and you don't have it, I guess. But like, as you can see, I'm down to nine water. If you click on a person, it's a little bit, it's a little bit hard to target at this moment of time, because how it's a bit, you can see it's just not fully focusing. But Twitchy here, Look at his thirst. It goes down 1% in 1, 2, 3, about 3, 4 seconds. 3, 4 seconds. So they need one water. Let's see, 30 seconds is 10%. Yeah, 30 seconds is 10%. So just 4 minutes is like 30, 40%. Every, five, every 7 or 8 minutes, they're going to get to the point where they're so low on water, they need more water. So just three people can go through a lot of water pretty quickly. Like, I said that, seven or eight minutes. We're at 30 water right now. And we've been recording for 18 minutes. So water goes through fast. They don't yep. wait to like below 50%, I think. So let's say every four minutes they require water. Which means, yeah, every four minutes they give or take, take water. So water is massively important. Like even the food doesn't go down as fast as water. I see, the hunger at 46% doesn't care, but they've already gone through 21. So there is a few balancing issues which need to be cleared out. Obviously the optimization for it doesn't lag, but that won't be the major thing. They want to make the game work. But yeah, water's a problem. Let's see, I'll just water here. We're at 9. As you can see, it takes 30 seconds. It takes 30 seconds per piece of water to be made. Which means in those 30 seconds for one water, three of my people have lost 10%. Actually, someone's just drinking right to where I drank it right now. So yeah, for me to make enough water for my people, that means every one and a half minutes I make three water. That's three water for all of my people to not go down. In those one and a half minutes, I will have lost 30% on each of them. Which means by the time the first guy's had a drink, he will be thirsty again. Because look, they get they get thir oh, pause. Yo. Got you. Nope. Hey. Let's see, twenty-seven percent. You get thirty percent. So every four and a half minutes they require water, and every three it takes four and a half minutes. Yes, sir. you should be able to just about make the water. But as you can see, I'm already very very low. So you're already pushing that stage. So yeah, water's a bit of an issue early on. Randomization where you don't get fish is a big issue early on. But it definitely has massive amounts of problems. It's one of the games I've been waiting for since the beginning. There's drying back there. Yeah, the whole 
focus a bit meh. Like another thing I like, like I say, apart from the aesthetic and the art style, is the fact that there's always something to look at. Like if I go over here, you can see the floor, you can see things down there. Like just barnacles here, that's fine. But there's also other things, just notice them here and there. Like there's like wrecked ships and stuff. And obviously there's the whales which look amazing. And I'm just going to send our boat over here to grab this. You should go get some fish. Really? Ah, come on. Okay, you have just enough plastic to build another one. You make me some more firewood. I think we're out of space, I think that's the problem. But yeah, water is a bit of an issue because obviously you need to keep up. It takes 30 seconds for each thing to be made. Now that's fine when you've got a lot of like a lot of dry wood and a lot of firewood being made. But of course, you need to add those extra few seconds on, like maybe three seconds here, three seconds there, three seconds here, three seconds there. Your 30 seconds, like one woodworking shed should be able to equip two distillers. But that relies on see this going to here would be perfect, but it doesn't. So production chains are a little bit out there right now. It may not bother other people. It just annoys me, and I have to point these things out. Look at him going around. I should directly target him. As you can see, he doesn't. Now, we may move on to the next time. We may not. Perseus is a game I want to play a lot of, so we'll see how it goes. With my ship, the reeling dinghy. Get on here. Well, oh, it doesn't break the ship. Okay, we've grabbed all the gear, now we have the uh, mass, which means we can now actually build that and travel from place to place. Now we definitely need the two people in the next one, and whatever resources we can get from the island. But I'd rather get to the, boat, the place after that so we can get water. Ooh, don't you dare hit me! So in the demo I played, and the alpha, occasionally the whales could hit you, but they've obviously been changed that they don't actually get within your circle of building. Which obviously is here, you can't build past it. Because it, it was amusing, but obviously having them clip through kind of ruin the immersion a little bit. But I like it. I do like the style a lot. The water's just holding up. Just. Okay, we now have access to the sail. I'm also going to put this here to get more of that because we need it. Okay, the game is out now. It came out Monday, I'd like to say. Yeah, I can say it. I can say Monday. I like to say Monday, so I'm going to. It's very early out. Like I say, it's 0.1.5, so it's got a bit of a journey ahead of it. There's a lot of things to sort out. They want to plan to put in a lot of more things as well. Like I say, it's very much bare bones. Definitely be going there to grab the villagers. Gives me only two. So, obviously, like I say, it only gives you two or so, so you're not going to get a big city. We can now travel. Don't tell me what to, we can go there. And obviously, get the fresh water, which will be massively needed. Because say, water is a big one. Then, obviously, fish. A single piece of wood got passed. Yeah, you could build a lovely little island floating city death thing. You can do all sorts of things. The game really is cutesy and it's really, really delightful. We definitely need to get one of these up and running. There we go. So water's very, very low, so we should survive. Food's getting there. Again, again, we'll need a drying rack for the food as well. Uh, fish, for some reason, only give you half. Ah, it's lagging a lot now. Fish only give you half. Tin food gives you full one. So you will be needing to get that up and running. 
Make this a fixed distiller. So, my playtime yesterday with it, the distiller said construction distiller, so it's going to be patchy. It's going to constantly being patched. We're needing little beds. Do that there. So yeah. We'll get housing things going, and obviously we need more resources. But I, it's got a very good start to it. Like, even, even with the freezing and stuff like that, I can take that, because I really like the start. Although it seems to be a lot more frequent, I don't quite know why. But there's huge amounts of cows in this game. There's huge amounts of things going on. Okay, turn that off so it doesn't repeat. There we go. Make me... Okay, it's getting a bit more hectic now. There's also little touches, like certain things are slightly altered to give it more variety. So if he's looking at the same things over and over again, it does break immersion. There we go. I like how it says small house. It says small house too, it's literally just a floating bed. Like, you know, you can call it a house if you like, don't lie to yourselves though. I think we're doing okay. Nice, lovely little floating hamlet, I guess. Should we have more firewood? Oh, have we dumped a load of it over here? Okay. There we go. So we're sleeping nicely now. It's going up fast. Water really does go down. Look at that. It's three times speed. It's almost like they're not even drinking. Look at it go. goes down way too fast. So you're always fighting water. Like, you're literally always fighting water. Until you get the solar collectors in, which obviously, you know, heats up the salt water so it hits the top and then it drops into bottles and stuff. That's how solar water collectors work. It's just... You do feel like, even though it's like a nice, casual, cutesy game, you're always fighting water at the beginning. I do all ways around it and so on. But I'm trying to show you how it works. And obviously the big one will be getting these solar collectors. Which will require me to get probably both these abandoned towns, if I remember correctly. So that's actually a majorly high priority. We probably shouldn't even be still be staying here. But we are. Because I'm the dumb. Look at that, always thirsty. So obviously you want to grab as much resources as humanly possible. But anyway, that's a story for different days. Is me showing your first impression. Like I say, you do want to get yourselves the solar stills. It says slowly. That's why, like most of the cities, I've seen like twenty of them. But anyway, I've been the Fallen Shogun. Hope you've enjoyed. And I will see each and every one of you, if you want to, in the next Who's That Indie, being a strategic, tactical survival game straight to your face holes. Also, this might be a series for a few episodes. Who knows? If you want to see us a series, tell me down in the comments below and I'll see what happens. Anyway, ciao for now, people. Be awesome. Buy the game. Support the channel. Thanks as always to the patrons who support me with money. And all of you awesome people who watch. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.